This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Throughout the nation and around the globe, from his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live on the radio. Here on the Contact Talk Radio Network, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dear James Live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. Today is all about ghosts and goblins, what's really hiding in your closet, and I have the amazing privilege and honor to have a surprise guest um, on my show today. She is a dear friend, a fellow light worker, and an amazing, amazing woman, um, Dr. Jan Seward, or as they all refer to her, Dr. Jan, is a woman who connects two worlds. As a clinical psychologist and a psychotherapist, she integrates information about science psychology, and human development to help people with their struggles in daily living. As an oracle, divination master, astrologer, and sacred geometer, uh, pardon me, geometer, she also uses, I knew I was going to mess up that word, she also uses energies from the unseen world to illuminate our soul's path and purpose during this and other lifetimes. All of her work is for the single purpose of bringing us to our divine purpose and to manifest our authentic self. Now, Dr. Jan, my friend Jan, lives and works in Great Barrington, Mass., and we had the incredible honor and privilege to journey together recently on our spiritual odyssey to um, Scotland. And so, again, an honor, Jan, my darling, how are you? Hello, James. And okay, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. I know. Boo. <laughs> Boo. There's the boogeyman, right? Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. What, what I'm just delighted. I am thrilled to have you on the show. And to, for all the listeners, you're going to, this woman is an amazing, amazing human being who shines her light and her energy and has such wisdom such lineage of wisdom that you're going to enjoy the, the next hour with us. So I, I'm thrilled that you are on with me today, Jan. Thank you so much. We're going to have a good time. We are, we are. So we are talking about, you know, we, I wanted to be a little tongue-in-cheek this week because, no pun intended there, um, because it is Halloween and we somewhat forget what the points and the purposes are. We get caught up in the commercialism of everything. And we, we need to be reminded of going back to our roots. Um, Absolutely. And so we, we do have a, a caller, and we're going to be taking, by the way, at the top of the hour, I just want to tell everyone, we are taking your calls live today. So if you have questions, intuitive questions, um, those types of things, things that are going on that surrounding um, fear or phobias or any elements of energy and stuff like that or anything else that's happening in your life, the phone lines are open, and I see that um, that... C is here with us, so uh, hold in there for me, uh, C, and we will get right to you. Um, but the phone lines are open. It's 877-230-3062. And again, we're going to be taking your calls live throughout the hour with myself and Dr. Jan. So real quickly, Jan, I want to just kind of give us a brief uh, element on Halloween, on, on its origins, if you will. Perfect. And then... We're going to jump in, kind of jump in right away and go to, and I mispronounced her name but the, uh, earlier, it's Sai. So we're going to go to Sai right away after we, we do this. So Halloween, and as you said, boo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> For a lot of people, they don't realize that, or, or maybe don't know that really Halloween, its origin is from the All Hallows' Eve or the All Saints' Eve, and it was a remembrance to the dead, including saints, which are hollows martyrs, and all faithful departed believers. So instantly, right off the bat, there's a remembrance to those that were here before and, and to those energies that were here before. And 
somewhat it's also recognized by the Christianized feast originally influenced by the Celtics. It was the harvest festivals. And it marked the end of the harvest season. But the Romans also had a feast of Pomona. It was the goddess of fruits and seeds. And, you know, not to be undone or out or outbested, it was also the festival of the, festival of the dead. The, um, it was called Parentalia which is linked to the Celtic festival of Samhain. So something as I got to looking at this and I, and I started feeling it, it hit me that it was all about the harvest, you know, this festival of the harvest, which is life, the bearing of fruits and seeds, this goddess, this, you know, festival to the goddess, which was nourishment or nourishment through life. And then, of course, the remembrance to the dead, which is our death. It's, it's this cycle of life. Exactly. And that was a really interesting thing because it, it constitutes a continuing cycle of life and the life force as energy. And so with that in mind, listeners, that's why we're doing the show today. And for all of you yet to realize it, because Jan has just come on and I'm opening the show, her knowledge of the oracles and sacred geometry and ley lines and vortexes and energy and it's limitless. So we're going to jump right in. You ready? I'm ready. All right. We're going to go right away to Sai from New York City. Hello, Sai. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hello, Sai. Thank you Hi. so much. Hi. Oh. Absolutely. What's going on? Um, <laughs> what a fantastic topic. Um, I don't know if this is a, um, I don't know how to express myself today, but I believe I have a lot of fear in, inside, and um, I, know, I don't know how to pass that and uh, move on to the next level. Okay, so, so you're feeling a lot of fear and anxiety in your life. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm kind of right off the bat what I'm what I'm feeling and, it, and it's interesting that it's this time cuz we're also coming into a point you're you're calling it at a point where it's also you know it's the end of the harvest so you're looking to purge you're looking to cleanse that which has been kind of percolating if you will um there's a lot of self-inflicted pain here yes yes okay um you know, it, it, it's Jan used this uh, this phrase, or we were talking earlier today, and and she used this phrase, you know, the boogeyman. Um, it's uh, it's as if you're afraid of your own shadow, is what they're telling me. Does that resonate with you? That you you're you're constantly looking over your shoulder. You're you you're you're always waiting for the next shoe to drop. It, it's as if you, it, no matter where you look. You're frightened. Yes. Yes. Um, hmm. I'm getting a lot. Um, Jan, talk to me for a minute. We, we talked I'm, about, again, this yes. is interesting because she's also, you know, she's in New York City. Um, exactly. So talk to so I listen for a minute. I want her to talk about New York City for a minute and how that is influencing, potentially influencing you. And that's perfect, okay. James. And that's perfect because the energies that surround it. And, for, and I'll also say that while we're talking, um, I have this beautiful set of tarot cards that I've never seen before. I think they were created just for me after we got back from our trip from Scotland because they're called the Sacred Sites Tarot. Never seen it before. And each card has a beautiful sacred site on it. And as we were getting ready to take the show, I pulled a card, and it's the 12, uh, the major arcana, the 12. And what that is, is it is in the persona of, on any other deck, it would be the hanged man. In this deck, mm -hmm. it's that beautiful statue of Christ that stands over Rio de Janeiro and overlooks the entire city from this incredibly high perspective. And as I was talking, what came to me is that this is what this means, that the, the 12 in the major arcana, the hangman, means taking a new perspective. And so much about fear 
is about being able to look at it from a different perspective, being able to see in a different way from a higher viewpoint what's really going on. And that's hard to do, especially when you're in a very crowded, concentrated city where one of the problems about fear as an energy, James and Sai, is that it's contagious. And it's like a contagion. If you want a crowd effect or a mob effect, go to a big city and just, you know, yell fire. That's one of the reasons why it's not legal to say fire in a crowded movie theater. So if you've got this contagion of fear all around you in a city, you're going to pick it up like breathing. And it can accrue on top of whatever fears we carry from our own early childhood experiences. And then we find ourselves in a vibratory state along with this fear. And and as you said, we just don't know which is us, which is the fear. Or as they say, again, in Scotland, where do I end and you begin? So a piece of this is really being able to recognize and take a different perspective on what actually is, where's the boogeyman? What is it that I'm fearing? Yeah, and, and something, you know, Sai, that as Jan's saying that, the other thing that's coming to me with her, the, with the visualizations that she gave you of uh, in Rio and everything and on the card, th- they also showed me, Jan, the tower card. And this is uh, in my mind that this is about, Sai, you tearing down your old beliefs, that it's fundamental. Like there were things that happened to you from childhood, Yes. Okay, so this is about you tearing down those old belief systems, those old fears, because those are what are holding you in place. They're holding you down. You're literally, you know, like pushed there. And, and it's odd because it's, it's as if you're the one, it's your fears pushing and holding you down to the floor to where you you literally can't move. You're immobile sometimes or a lot of times. Um, and the the major arcana card that, that Jan mentioned is showing you this visual of, in essence, the, the, the Jesus energy, the Melchizedek energy sitting on high. You're up. You're meant to rise up and sit on high, have a new perspective from on high. But it's tied to your letting go of the past. It's, it's fundamental. I know you're asking yourself, yeah, I know that. How? Right? <laughs> well, one of the things that I just experienced that um, it's very difficult to, for me, very difficult to find the people that I can trust or I can respect, I respect for. And it takes a long time for me to find those people. And a uh, few people I just found, but none of them in New York City. <laughs> and um, beautiful things, strong aspects and spirituality. Um, but when I can come back here, I get lost. I feel like I'm lost. And um, so last couple of months, especially so... Uh, it was an up and down, up and down, up and down kind of thing that I'm okay. I can let go of things, and uh, I was working on it. Then some incident or something happens, and just this fear takes over and um, right back to a place where I was. And I know it's a practicing. I need to practice this. Um, but it was just... Today, um, my emotion was a very highly um, mix, mixing mixture of happy, excited, um, but also this fear still there. So, um, and, and can I jump in, James? Would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll come back to the yeah. Okay, great. Because because also, Sai, the uh, I don't know if you've ever actually seen the uh, tarot card with the hanged man, and and he's uh, he's hanging upside down, and he's typically kind of twisted up in a vine or has something that's holding him, suspending him upside down, and it's a it's a mercury card, a mercurial card, and the problem is you want to do something. You think you want to do something, but the challenge of the hanged man card is that you've got to kind of stay still in the feeling long enough to figure out what's going on. And that's a really hard thing. So I, what I'm also experiencing as you're talking is 
how hard it is to just kind of hold on until the right perspective can come through. And that's, that's what I wanted to say there, James. Right. And, and also cite two things. The person you're going to need to look and, and you're going to need to do this and it's going to sound very funny, but I'm, I want you to practice in a mirror. And I know that the mirror can, the mirror, you don't like the mirror, um, <laughs> is what Correct. they're saying to me. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't like the mirror, but Correct. <laughs> because, because it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a reflection. And remember that mirrors, um, typical mirrors that we have in our homes and things like that in our car, all, all those places, they don't show you a, a true perspective or a reflection of yourself. There's a special mirror that you can order. Um, and you and I are going to be talking after the show and when I do your private uh, consultation. Um, so I will get you that information on, on this mirror that I want you. It's, it's, it's a mirror that uh, it comes as a, as a set, if you will, and it shows you your reflection as people see you, not the one that's in a typical mirror. So once you get this mirror, I want you to start practicing just merely sitting in front of it and looking at it because what they're saying is the person that you need to trust first is the one that you're looking at, the one that is being reflected back to you. She's the one that you lost along the way. And she's there, she's in there, but she's distorted by the one that you're looking at from the other mirrors. You know, the other mirrors are kind of showing you what you see inside, not what others see. Um, and the second thing is that, um, and Jan, this is, I don't, I don't think that you're meant to be in New York City right now. I think it's a premature destination for you. Um, there's reasons that you are there. It, you know, you like it and it's somewhat of an escapism, um, from the past, but it also is causing, um, um, it, it's, it's causing your, your development to happen too fast. It's as if you're not ready for everything it's presenting to you. I agree. Do you understand? <laughs> Yeah, and and so you have this kind of love torment relationship with New York City because it is it you are meant to experience it and you are meant to live there. It's just later in life. You're, you're, James, that's so interesting that you're giving Sai this this information, and you and I literally were just talking about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We had both Go landed ahead. in New York City before we were ready for it and it was overwhelming. Later on, now it's like the oyster or a banquet, but before then it was just way way too much. Right. So you see Sai, what's happening is when you come to some place and and this is what we were Jan and I were talking about, I went to uh you know, New York City 25 years ago, my first time and it literally frightened me like nothing else. And I didn't go back for 20 years. And when I went back after 20 years, I was like, oh, I've got this. Now I understand it. Now it's not intimidating. It's not. Now it's going to add to my development, not inhibit it or cause me to go down roads that are that are not right. So there's there's something. Is there a connection for you to either mainland China or mainland uh, Japan? Okay, you're meant to you're meant to go back there. Um, what they're saying to me is face the festival, and what that means to me is the you know there's the 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 we've talked about the the festivals of um, the harvest, the festivals of the dead, of honoring the dead, the festivals of that are surrounding Halloween, and the festivals of the seeds and the fruit. You need to complete the cycle. There's something there that you need to complete, and we'll talk about this more in your private reading. But it's it's imperative for you to face the festival, i.e. this festival of life, this cycle of life there, so that you're able to journey onward freely. You will free yourself by doing this. Okay? Okay. So don't don't panic. We're going to be talking. <laughs> I'll reach out to you. I, I I heard it. Did you hear that, Jan? She's like, I uh, did. Okay. I just, 
Um, no. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Yeah. So, so I don't, you know, you're, you're, everything's happening. Perfect timing. And I'll explain more of it and why. And then, and you'll know it's right and it'll happen. And, and you'll come out of this the other side brilliantly. You truly will. You know, you know you'll have your moments, but it's going to be, um, it's liberating for your soul. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. You're so welcome, Cy, and I will be in touch after the show. Um, you're listening to Dear James Live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. It's all about ghosts and goblins with my incredible, incredible guest, Dr. Jan Seward. We'll be right back after this break. Desire to be more consciously enlightened is innate. Do you feel there's more to life? If so, find the resource that's right for you by going to dearjames.com slash resources. You are the reality you create. Make it a great one. When you ask a question, the universe hears you, and in a multitude of ways, they seek to communicate with you to provide the intuitive insight, answers, and advice you seek. From serious to silly, monumental to mundane, there's nothing the universe can't cover. Maybe the insight you receive is exactly the affirmation you were looking for. Then again, it may just give you a whole new perspective on things. And that's the beauty of the universe. Submit your question to Dear James at DearJames.com and click Ask. The gift of giving is immeasurable. Give of your time, talent, resources, and money. Give not only because you can, but because by doing so, it is already coming back to you. As a people, we are only as strong as the least among us. Together, we harness the power of the collective whole and see through our deeds the power of miracles, both large and small. Find the charity that's right for you by visiting www.dearjames.com and click on Charitable Giving. One person or kind act really does make the difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dear James Live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. Today, it's all about ghosts and goblins with my super amazing guest, Dr. Jan Seward. And by the way, I want to tell you before we go to Danielle, two more seconds, Danielle. We're almost there with you. Um, uh, Dr. Jan has a website, so I want to put that out there for everybody. It's Dr. Jan Seward, so D-R-J-A-N-S-E-W-A-R-D, like David, dot com. And please avail yourself of Jan's services. You will be forever changed. Just her mere presence in your life is uh, a, a gift from the universe. So, all right, Danielle, we're going to go to Danielle from Florida. Hello, Danielle. Hello there. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. How are you? I'm amazing. I, I want to thank you guys in the universe because uh, this is the first time I'm listening to the station. And, oh, um, hi, Danielle. I, was, I was on the last call because Michael Madrid was on with Carrie, and I stayed on, and, and I, kept, I was out in the garden, and I kept on saying, go in and get the number, and I couldn't write it down quick enough, so I had to call the radio station, and I got ah. through, so I, I'm, I'm Yay. supposed to talk to you. Yay! Yay. It's, meant to, it's meant to be. <laughs> it, it is, and you know, it was funny because when you said ghosts and goblins, I'm like, 
okay, that's such a strange topic in a sense, but not really for Halloween, you know. Um, exactly. I lost it was all my a, mother on a little tongue in cheek to celebrate Halloween and to bring in the 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 awareness of energy in our uh, you know in our lives yes. how it, how it plays out. Absolutely, and Halloween's always a fun um, festive hol- holiday for the children to to dress up and use their imagination. So I always loved it. It was always one of my favorite things to do. You know, be someone that you always want to be. You know. Exactly. There it is. That's right. So tell me what. So what's tell us what's going on. What's happening? What's you? What's that? What's that? Oh, there are goblins Oops. in the lines. I know there are goblins on the lines. I think we just lost her. Hold. Oh, okay, so we're going to hold tight for a second and see if we get yes, her back, get and her then. Back. So, so Jan, talk talk to us about because you and I were talking about energy. And, yes. and how it affects everyone. Well, the, the, the miraculous thing about energy, and again, this is why this holiday is so important, because it makes things we typically don't see or think about, we can see them. Everybody comes out of the, it all comes out of the closet. It's out of the closet. Um, energy is everywhere. And we are just bundles of energy. You you talked about it so beautifully again before James when we were getting ready for the show. That really, what looks we look like we're solid matter, but we're not. If you could look at us under a fine enough microscope, and they've actually done this, we're just particles, all kind of hanging together through vibration. And when my vibration shivers a little bit, then your vibration resonates and shivers, and somebody else's does, and it's that brilliant ripple effect. And we really all are connected through this energy field. And people who've worked with energy or have been, you know, have had energetic body work or therapies, whatever, long distance healings, your work, James, you're sending energy out to every person that you touch and um, they get that feeling. So that's the, that's the miracle of it. And it's the mystery of it because we still don't yet quite know how to harness, right? All of right. that energy. And, and it's, it's a source of power. And I always joke, you know, James, you've met my daughter. I have this brilliant now 12 year old daughter and i but i always had to say and she's a little witch she's a little <laughs> witch but i always had to say i'm always going to be the smarter witch and what i tell my daughter is you're a very powerful girl but you've got to use your power for the good yeah. right. very important and that's very the thing important. you know it's how are we going to use that energy there you go right right how do we interact in society because we are all energy and Danielle, I know you're back, so we're going to be right back to you. Um, but that's something about this particular episode that I really wanted to convey is the understanding and the awareness that we are not merely these mortal beings, you know, that, that are sitting so encased true. in skin and so forth, that we are a soul within a body and, and that soul has created this body. And, and more importantly, to realize and understand everyone that it's energy. We are all, everything in our, in our realm, if you will, in our lives, everything is energy. And the more, as Jan just said, the more you come into your knowledge as she is, as, as she's directing her daughter, raising her daughter to understand, the more you harness and understand your power and utilize it for good, you will have mastered a, a great understanding of your existence here. Yes, that's truly, that's truly mastery. That is truly self mastery. That is truly enlightenment. That's everything. That's the, that's the brass ring. That's what everybody is um, trying for with their soul path. Exactly. So, all right, Danielle, we're coming back to you. Danielle from Florida. Hello, Danielle. I'm back and I was very much into what you were talking about with the energy because I've been recently um, experiencing my energy in life and, and tapping into the higher self of myself and um beautiful i find it overwhelming at times because it's Mm. so um it's it's such strong vibes i mean it's beautiful i'm very joyful and blissful and and i see everything in a different way um and the possibilities are endless and i feel like i've been being led to teachers and opportunities that i never um i don't even you know like what i've been told by my guides is I give you pieces at a time because if you had the puzzle, you'd be scared and the fear would set in. 
So you can't huh. have the bigger picture. And I'm still waiting for, like, little clues. And that's why I said I don't really know why I called today. Like, what made me run in and say, James, I have to call. And then they said we get a reading. And I'm like, okay, this is very interesting why you're making me call. So I'm just blessed to have gotten through and to connect with you both and, and take in your wisdom. Oh, my goodness, as we are, Danielle, as we are, because what a wise woman you are. Yeah, she, it's very funny because as you're talking, Danielle, literally the 333 pops up. So that's Ascended Masters. That's the symbol in so, exactly. the, the numerology. I saw that too. Yeah, you saw that, right? It's 333. <laughs> I did. I looked at it and I was like, okay, there it is. <laughs> um, what's the, you, you've been experiencing loss. Yes? Uh, yes. Well, I've been experiencing the detachment of things that are not necessary to be attached to. Um, right. Emotional. And, and it's guess, like emotional loss. It, exactly. Right. I guess so. It would be more, I mean, I'm not sad. It's a loss of, 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 of necessariness in a sense. Um, right. It, it, I mean, it's on, like the on, loss of old ways. Yes. Yes. It's, like, it's, oh, a, it's definitely. the loss of old ways, old thoughts, old friends, old stuff. Everything. Uh, er, yeah. My whole life, I feel like it's been reborn to new of a new that that was always within and a knowing that was always deep within, but it was like so buried that it, it, it just, I guess, all the out of world stuff um, just overtook it and, and, and buried it up, you know? And it makes me realize that everybody, we all have this within us. We're all, it's like our birthright, and we're born with this. We just don't know it. And then we get told what we have to do, and it kind of screws us up unless we get hit enough or shook enough or right. we wake up. <laughs> right. Because so. they're, they're showing me two things, Danielle. One is, is your, your hand in the making. Um, so you, you went for um, a long time being unconscious, you know, walking through life with in an unconscious manner, and, and that was at your hand, so to speak. And yeah. now you're coming into a lot of awareness, and, you know, circuitry boards are overloading. That's why they were saying to you, like, oh, if we, if we gave you the whole thing, you'd kind of vaporize, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's why when we got disconnected, yeah. I kind of got upset Surprise. because I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Don't cut me off now. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll put the phone down. Don't do this with the energy. I mean, I've had electricians at my house because the lights will go off on one area. Danielle, and I'm trying to always blowing circuits. That's really funny. That's really <laughs> funny. Good for you. That's really great. Okay, so, so what else do they see? Any other little things well, you well, can I'll tell just, me? If I can just jump in. Absolutely, jump, jump in, Jan. In. Well, first of all, Danielle, you're quite a master. I don't want to frighten you or anything. Like, well, this is time. I can scare you a little bit and show you. No, you can scare me. I need to be scared. It's Halloween. You're you're really you're really incredible. You're a master, James. We just got a third host on the show today because what you said, right? Right. I just wanted to say before you continue, can you hear her? I mean, she's like, "Let's go." Yeah, exactly. That's the energy, and then to to express it with such perfection about the 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 idea of saying goodbye and that this. This is, and, and, and of course, I pull another card, of course, and what comes up is the scariest one in the deck, the one that always goes boo, which is number 13, which is the death card. I'm, right. You knew it. Of course you did. You're psychic. <laughs> so, but, but for Danielle, I don't know how familiar you are with the tarot, but 13 is the most b- brilliant and elevated number because it is about birth and rebirth, death and rebirth, the necessary passage and losses. By the way, I'm just going to put on my psychology hat for just a minute because Judith Viorst, that wonderful writer, wrote a book many years ago called Necessary Losses. As we, pa- as we travel through life, we have to say goodbye to things that no longer serve. A favorite old pair of shoes, a wonderful jacket that we cocooned ourselves in. We have to mourn it. And mourning is an essential part of saying goodbye, as is the celebration of being able to throw off what doesn't fit anymore. And that's the brilliance of this death card. It comes to all of us all throughout our life. It's not just the final ultimate transition when we leave these bag of bones that we're still carrying around Mm -hmm. with us. It's every moment. It's all kinds of losses. And you are welcoming it. So it's a celebration. 
Yes, um, yeah. I, I couldn't have gotten a better card. I mean, for the time, I look at... It's you perfect. Know, I lost you my did mom. it. You conjured I it. I lost my mom six years ago on Halloween. And, oh, um, it, hi. It, so it, she's oh, no, saying it, hello. No, she's, she's still with us. She's just not here in that in that sense. I, I, I've i grown in the six years, and what, like I said, it, it, it made me a lot. I've learned more from her passing and her up there than I... I can't say than when she was here on Earth, but... The lessons have been deeper, put it that way, from heaven. So I, yeah. I, I'm, I feel like this Halloween is it's six years, and I'm, wait, um, it's my new birth. So that death card, a year and a half ago, would have scared the hell out of me. Today, it makes me want to go out and celebrate. And guess what card just came up? And again, and then James, I'll send it over to you. But the eight. The eight, the major arcana eight, which is this beautiful Buddha sitting on top of a city with, you know, eight pillars and eight, of course, infinity and rebirth. Amen. And and to tag on with that, um, Danielle, is as Jan was talking to you about the 13, the death card, the the uh, reader on my screen came up 707, which is, of course, miracles and the God source energy. So this is kind of your your miracle moment this because mm-hmm. you know the death card can come up and it's it can be literal it can be you know metaphorically you know that, that we're meant to right. release things and so this clearly is saying to me what i'm getting is that this is absolutely the 707 is definitely about the tra- your transformation the miracles that are going to occur because of your transformation because you played a, you had a heavy hand and i'm going to point that out when we talk privately but you had a heavy hand in um life to this point and yeah yeah i know that you know what i'm talking about so <laughs> and beyond that then I do. when when jan went to the to the 8 it was 808 so again, you know, it's very funny. So she, you know, her timing of, you know, there's the, the synchronicity of the universe timing out. Now, before, before we let you go and we, we do, um, uh, and I get in touch with you after the show, who is the male, there's a male influence that has the, um, capacity, if you will, and I use that word and I'll explain it in a second, but has the capacity to hold you back. Uh, uh, my son's father, and and that I will not let happen. Okay, so literally, it could be my ex-husband, but it's it's my son's father. I have a, a six-year-old that when my mom passed, I gave birth three days before I found out she had three months to live. So that wow. baby, my son, um, yeah, and I was forty, so my hormones, and I don't have a thyroid, so it was a real big. I can't even tell you what I went through. But it was—it was, it was a, it, it's a blessing. It was a blessing. I yeah, it was a gift from God, a literally. Oh yeah, yeah no, it, it, was, it was. Yeah, that's a literal but, gift from God. Um, but is that because, is that is there is there a red flag there? Is there something I should? Well, the the red flag for the, it's not a red flag. What it is is a is it's a uh, an awareness. They want you to be conscious of your thoughts, actions, words, behaviors, and everything because. You're meant to transcend this influence. You're meant to transcend uh-huh. this person. Um, you've literally been given this gift from God, and very much your your mother and your your son are tied together. Mm-hmm. They are um, each um, they're each beacons. They're each guiding lights in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, she was there leading you to something that you didn't always see. Um, mm-hmm. And he will be what uh, your son will be that which brings you home, brings you to, on that journey home. Um, and home is, uh, I mean that in the sense of our, our heaven oneness. Heaven on earth. Yeah, exactly. Heaven on earth. Our, heaven on our earth soul, and, and us connection. all being connected as one, as I see exactly. us all as one now. I mean, exactly. I, I literally have done a lot of work and I do feel the oneness within all of us and how we're connected to Mother Earth. I mean, you know, we really, we just so borrow beautiful. our body from her and we yeah. don't even realize it. It's like, you know, we don't belong. This body doesn't belong to us. You know what I'm saying? So who are we to judge it? 
Right. There's a, there's a beauty in the fact that you realize, and you know, really, Jan, I'm just thinking I could be quiet now and she can just take the rest of the show. Yeah, I'll just say, Danielle, in case you're busy next Wednesday, maybe Danielle's available to do your show. I like Danielle. um, You're awesome. I'm sitting in Great Barrington, which is the Northeast United States where we get fall. We've had a beautiful fall and even what it's called, of course, fall for the falling of the leaves. And all these brilliantly colored leaves are are releasing, just releasing from their branches. They're dancing through the air. They're, they're drifting down. Mm. They're, they're, weaving their magic and they're going to be the new the new fertilizer for next year's growth and it's just beautifully i mean you can't can't say it any better than that unless you're danielle oh. and then you can and then you can't oh, right? no. exactly. oh. so. so you guys are so uh, i i thank you i mean i i thank you for reassuring me and and i thank the universe for blessing me with you guys today because it, oh. it's amazing Right, right back you, at you. Yeah, absolutely. God bless you, Danielle. And thank you for having the courage to call in and listening and, and speaking so eloquently about our purpose and life's Woo-hoo! purpose. And everything. You, are, you are definitely on the path. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the, the influence and, and some roadmap issues and everything on our private consultation and, and go from there, all right? I look forward to talking to you, James. Bless you guys. Wonderful. Have an awesome day. Bye. You, you too. too bless Danielle. you. Happy Bye-bye. Halloween. So you're listening to Dear James Live, Express Yourself, Tell It Like It Is, and then hear what Dear James has to say today with my incredibly special guest, Dr. Jan Seward. We'll be right back after this break. Available for private, individual, group, and corporate consultations, Dear James will provide you with the intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Schedule your consultation by going to www.dearjames.com and click on Consultation. The gift of giving is immeasurable. Give of your time, talent, resources, and money. Give not only because you can, but because by doing so, it is already coming back to you. As a people, we are only as strong as the least among us. Together, we harness the power of the collective whole and see through our deeds the power of miracles, both large and small. Find the charity that's right for you by visiting www.dearjames.com and click on Charitable Giving. One person or kind act really does make the difference. When you ask a question, the universe hears you, and in a multitude of ways, they communicate to you the intuitive insight, answers, and advice you seek. Ask Dear James a question and experience the magic of the universe. Visit DearJames.com and click Ask. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dear James Live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. Today is all about ghosts and goblins with my amazing guest, Dr. Jan Seward. And so here we are, Jan. We've got a, a and you, roughly... And you, and you know what I want to say, James? No, you are. No, you are. <laughs> It's a mutual and you love know what else? You know, we're, we're having so much fun on this show, and I was thinking of Danielle, and I just want to encourage everyone to get, you know, go out and you'll find your best buddy and find your best buddy to evolve with because it's so much easier and better when you're doing it with someone you love. And they're out, everyone's out there. We're all, we're all finding ourselves. We're finding each other. And it's a beautiful community. And so, James, I know you're part of it and you've started your own community on Dear James. And I am just so ecstatic to be a part of it. It's awesome. You're awesome. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. And, and it's like with Sai, I mean, that, that's clicking in my head for her as she called yes. in that it's about finding that, that the place that resonates with you. 
And like Danielle, when it when things start when you start experiencing yes. the loss of the things falling away, yes. while that can be you know it can give you this melancholy and 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 you and I were talking about there was an article literally I got as an email and it and yes. here it pops up and it says you're on this path and it's brilliant and bright and everything's going along and then it says but wait where did everyone go exactly yes and, and you know I'm thinking I'm getting these images of little kids running across dark streets together. You know, my, my mom has this great story of when they used to listen to the radio and they weren't allowed, they weren't supposed to listen to this really scary, you know, mystery theater or whatever. And of course they broke the rules and they did it. And then one of their friends had to go home, <laughs> but all of them as a group, like ran her home and dropped her off and then ran home themselves. And that's <laughs> the best thing to always be, you know, with your good buddies when you're going through the scary times. Right. And, and to realize that that, group can change you yes. know, to allow yourself the yes. grace and the yes. openness to realize that some people come in you know it's that is that beautiful yes, thing some come beautiful. in for a lifetime some come in for a moment it's it's up for us to understand and allow and to not hang on to things that don't serve us yes um, it's, it's, it's from a non-judgmental place but to allow that growth inside to happen because otherwise you become stagnant or you know and yes. up, there's the energy and that creates negative energy yes Ooh, we're, so we're, we're back, back to our topic so i want to go on to something before we run out of time fear is energy exactly everybody has exactly. to understand this we look at fear and you can speak to this from a very obviously you know a clinical yes. psychologist standpoint from a metaphysical spiritual standpoint there is an awareness that the universe is wanting people to understand and it's why it's around halloween it's it's right here that fear is a commodity. It's an energy. And it's our perception of fear that makes it either positive or negative. And in that, what I'm, what I'm wanting you to see as, as you're listening to this and is to understand fear. Think of it like any other energy, like the electricity, like gasoline for your car, like money in your bank account. It's all energy. And if we start understanding that fear can act as a motivator, an accelerator, even though it's fear and it has this kind of negative connotation, if you will, it's a positive attribute. It's a positive motivator. And so... So, so true, James. You, you've said it perfectly. And if you think about the biochemistry of fear, we only have a certain number of chemicals, all the chemicals are helpful, but in too much, too heavy a dose, too quick a dose, adrenaline, we all need adrenaline. Too much adrenaline, we can stop our heart. We don't want that. And so Danielle's point where sometimes the universe will just give you things in enough that you can tolerate, that's how we kind of temper so that we don't overfill our gas tank or we don't shock ourselves at the, at the outlet, but also – you know, it happens. It will happen. In our lifetime, we're going to feel afraid. And so to, to understand how to manage the energy, how to breathe through the energy, how to ground ourselves very literally. Because what do you do if you're, if you're out where there's going to be a lot of lightning? And sometimes with that tower, which is a Uranian lightning kind of card image, boom, lightning is going to strike. We ground ourselves. We go in through our roots so that our, that our self is stable. The universe provides the antidotes to overwhelming fear. It's there. Right, it's there. And and it's a it's a uh it requires a perception change. You yes. know, we have to we have to be able to begin seeing fear as an energy because so many times self included here, you know, until the realization hit me that oh, fear is an energy, it's a commodity. Yes. It's a because it can be used as you're saying, you know, it can be used we can perceive it and take it on in a negative fashion and thereby we're getting too much of this negative energy. Yes. Or we can go, ah, you know, it, it was because of fear that yes. I actually made that I decided to move. Fear you know, became was, the catalyst. Fear exactly. became the signal. Because that's the other thing. People with a lot of anxiety, James, the anxiety, when it has a signal function, hey, let's look like, like a yellow light on a street light. You know, green right. means go, red means stop. But yellow is like, there's something to pay attention to. Let me pay right. attention to this. Oh, now I need to do something. Fear, you've said this before, fear really becomes our friend. 
Yes. Yeah. It, it, that's the other thing. The, the other takeaway from today's show is fear is your friend. Yes. Because when it's utilized, when you recognize it as a positive energy, a positive force in your life, it is friendly. And if you learn to look at fear and say, ah, you're, you're really my friend. You're wrapped in the, in the cloak of an opposite. Yes. But you're really my friend. What is it that I'm meant to do? Yes. And the other thing that comes to mind about Halloween and the delight of Halloween is that we allow ourselves to literally face our fears. We're looking at the things that scare us and then the lights come on or the mask comes off or we realize it's our uncle Sydney who's dressed up as that scary guy or whatever. <laughs> and we laugh because most fears are just inner projections made out to be much bigger than they are than they really are. And when we can laugh at it, we then have the power. We take our power back over the fear, and the fear just drops away, like so many bones clattering to the ground. Absolutely. And when we realize from a soul plan perspective, uh, the, the, the understanding and belief that we have chosen what we want to do and experience in this life, and then you realize that we typically, because of you know great transformation comes from our experiences in life and we typically do it on a soul plan level based on opposites meaning exactly bring fear of this item or this bring me this you know this heartache this harm which all conjures up fear but it's really cloaking it's masquerading the true gift the true gem that's hidden in its opposite yes and and thereby when we all start engaging with fear responsibly and i want everyone to hear that because it is an energy yes, it is so a catalyst well it yes. is a motivator and it's to the degree that we understand its energy and its power and its oppositeness if you will in our life that we come to get the real pearl the real wisdom but you and i were talking jan about you know the 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 harnessing of Energy. When uh, just tell real quickly, the uh, we were all there in in Scotland in this energy, and what happened in London? Um. The, oh, yeah, the, there was a tornado. Yeah. There was yes. a tornado. Voila. Yes, exactly. So we're all together. There's 17 of us, and we're doing this amazing spiritual odyssey. <laughs> yes. And the effect of the that, wind, as it were. <laughs> right? Exactly. And the number of things that happened. In terms of literally the parting of the skies, the parting of yes. the rain, the the rainbows that came. Yes. You realize that we are all energy and we need to better understand the awareness of that fact and the harnessing of that fact. And um, using it responsibly. I love exactly. what you said. Yeah. Using it positively like you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful positive force, this element. And and to that, Jan, we're we're down to the last couple of minutes. So how I did just that wanna, happen? I know I could sit and talk with you for the next, you know, I don't know how many bajillion hours. So um, <laughs> so obviously you're coming. You're going to be coming back. We know that you're going to be a, a regular, a regular frequented guest here on Dear James. Oh, and blessing. it is such an honor and a privilege to have you on today and to share with the callers and everything. So thank you so much for that. Namaste. Namaste to you. So for everyone. I, we thank you, Jan and I thank you for sharing Halloween with us and the spirited discussion about energy, fear, phobias, the responsibilities of harnessing that energy and that understanding that power um, and the brilliance th- of transformation that comes from it. And those are priceless gifts. And uh, so we're all lucky to be sharing on this journey called life. And, and thank you, Cy, and thank you, Danielle, for calling in to have the courage to call in. Next week is Express Yourself Midlife Crisis. So that'll be interesting and fun. And as we come down to the close of the show, as I always say, no matter where you are or whom you're with or what you're doing, wrap yourself in goodness. You've been listening to Dear James Live, Express Yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what dear James has to say. Ghosts and goblins, happy Halloween, everyone. You've been listening to Dear James Live on the radio with your host, Dear James. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more. 
by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.